Hi everyone. Today I'm taking the opportunity to explain to you what sports kinesiology really is. This is a question I've been asked thousands of times over the last couple of years and a lot of my students have trouble answering this question. So I'm trying to make it easier for everyone. Sports kinesiology is a culmination of the best of Eastern and Western medicine. What we've tried to do in sports kinesiology is combine the two into a comprehensive system of human analysis, human movement and human performance. By taking the best of both worlds, we're able to look at factors that other people might miss. The old saying goes, if the only tool you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. With sports kinesiology, we've taken from disciplines as diverse as orthopedic medicine, osteopathy, chiropractic, kinesiology, traditional Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, nutritional science, sports science and strength and conditioning. By combining all these into one integrated approach, we're able to look at the problem in a whole way. Quite a lot of therapies will focus on one problem that could be the cause. For example, massage therapists may think the problem comes from a trigger point. Osteopath or chiropractor, it may be a sublux bone. With sports kinesiology, what we try and do is actually take all factors into consideration to find the best result from the client. Our treatment involves therapy, so we use kinesiology techniques. What kinesiology is, is a gentle form of muscle monitoring that looks for imbalances in the body systems. It works primarily on the neural system, which is how our brain controls our movement. When we test the muscle, we're not looking for the gross strength of the muscle. What we're looking for is neuromuscular integrity. What that means is how well can the brain control what the muscle is doing. By ascertaining this, we can then use further techniques to ascertain what is causing the muscle imbalance. There are a number of factors that can cause a muscle's neuromuscular system to go offline. For example, poor diet. If you've got a poor diet and you've got inflammation in your stomach, what it will do is it will send a message back to your spinal cord which will send a message to your brain saying that there's inflammation in that part. What happens though at the spinal cord level is the brain doesn't get the signal saying the stomach's in trouble, it just has the message that that whole section of the spinal cord is in trouble. The stomach's innervated by the 5th to the ninth thoracic vertebrae. Now there's a lot of muscles that actually come out of that as well, one group being our all-important abdominal muscles, which are really important for core stability and movement. What will happen if the stomach's inflamed, the brain will get the signal saying T5 to T9 is in trouble. What that will do is it will actually shut down neural flow, blood flow and energy to the abdominal muscles as the body redirects that to heal the injured stomach. Another factor that can affect the muscle is an emotional problem. What has been found over many years of research is that each muscle connects to a particular meridian in Chinese medicine. What meridians are, are energetic pathways through the body from which qi energy or life energy flows. For further research, they've actually identified which muscle acts with which meridian and therefore which emotions will affect which muscle. Example, feelings of grief and guilt affect the lung meridian. Now the lung meridian controls the muscles of the middle deltoid or the lateral deltoid, the serratus anterior and the coracobrachialis muscle. When we have problems of grief and guilt we might find that we have problems with the lateral deltoid, serratus anterior or the coracobrachialis. By resolving the emotional stress we can then resolve the muscle back to full function. Other issues can include, besides emotional factors and digestive factors, hormonal factors, you can have structural factors, other psychological factors, and energetic factors, such as the balance of chi throughout our meridians or chakras. After we do our therapy, we combine that with movement. We like to think of what we do as movement impairment specialists. We take away the blocks that impair movement. By combining an approach of dynamic flexibility, mobility, soft tissue work, corrective exercise and strength and conditioning, what we do after we reintegrate the neural pattern of kinesiology is we reinforce it with exercise. There's no point getting on the table and having a bunch of therapy done to you unless you learn how to move properly again. That's one of the shortcomings of many traditional therapies. It's a very one tunnel view approach. So when we combine all these aspects, we can actually work with a person in a very deep way and get to the real, real cause of the problem. 
We combine this with nutritional medicine, particularly customized nutrition. Using a system of assessments and questionnaires, we're able to determine which foods best suit a person's individual metabolic type. By doing this and giving foods correct for their biochemistry, we can then help improve their performance and rehabilitate their problems. An example would be if someone has insulin resistance issues, we can actually identify you know, what foods are causing insulin resistance. Generally it's uh, high sugar foods like bread, sweets, sugars, refined milk, etc. And give them what foods they actually need to have support their biochemistry. For example, some people may need higher amounts of fats and proteins, some people may need higher amount of vegetable carbohydrates. When we combine this with a customized exercise program and a customized therapy program, we're really getting the whole deal when treating someone. So that's it, that's basically an explanation of sports kinesiology. Any questions, please email us at DC Health and we look forward to helping you soon.